What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Prodigious Customs YouTube channel. I'm Jason Stoltz and I'm here to help you get back out in the garage and get your projects done. We're going to work on the third Celica today. We're going to check it for compression, but I fear it's going to suck just like the other two. Clearly these cars have issues with the valves, so regardless of what the numbers are, I'm still going to pull the head off of that other silver Celica. Since it's supposed to be lower mile car, everything should be nicer. We'll go ahead and get the head pulled off and take it to a machine shop and get the valves checked out. So with that, let's get into checking the compression on this car. Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna have numbers that suck. This car's been sitting for quite a while, so I lubed everything up with some oil, and we'll just check out what these numbers are gonna be. We'll see what the problem cylinder on the silver silica says here. I've kind of wired it up to go ahead and bypass everything, so I just have a hot to the starter and a switch, and we'll just turn it over and see what we get. Hoping for good numbers, but kind of doubtful. <laughs> oh shoot, that was awesome. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. So we're sitting at 100 pounds, not good enough. Sitting at 150, that's pretty good. higher than the minimum that they require. Sitting at 130, still sucks. Sitting at about 60, still really sucks. So we're gonna go through this motor later. Uh, probably gonna build this one to be a turbo motor. That's my plan anyway. So the numbers on this one suck just the same, so Clearly these cars have an issue with the valves. Uh, who knew? But that's okay, we'll build this motor later. I wanna put a turbo on it, fix it up to be really nice. This is the first complete car ever painted, fixed, replaced the Uniside on, so it kinda holds a special place in my heart. So this car definitely deserves a nicer motor, something that's really zippy and fun to drive. So with that said, let's get the Silver Celica shoved in here. We'll get the head ripped off of it and see what mysteries that motor has to tell us. So, stick around. So, first things first when pulling this head off, obviously you wanna disconnect your battery. Next, we're gonna drain the coolant. You can drain your oil if you want to, just know that you're gonna to need to change it afterwards because whatever residual water is still in the head will make its way into the oil and create a chocolate milk slushy that will ruin your bearings. So, don't do that. Get that stuff drained and replaced as soon as everything's back together. So we'll get into pulling this thing apart. I'll try to time lapse it and talk about important things along the way. I've seen some videos on YouTube about it, but nothing that shows if it's possible to take it apart without having to take the whole timing cover off. They kind of talk about it, but I haven't really seen anything actually take place. So let's see if we can do it. Couple helpful notes are if you pull the throttle body itself off, then you'd be able to get to these hoses easier. So I might do that on the reassembly. 
because they're kind of hard to get to otherwise. So let's just keep going. So as you see me pull the bolts off, this is kind of how I like to label them. So all my intake bolts go in one, valve covers in another, and so on and so on, unless I can put it back in the hole where it came out of. Like, for example, the bracket that went from the intake to the alternator, I'm gonna leave that bolt in the alternator. Although anything that's on the head that's not necessary to go to the machine shop or could get broken or lost, I'm gonna pull off of it. So what I'm looking for is my timing marks to make sure the motor is at top dead center, the cams are both completely timed to give myself an idea of if it's possible to pull it off and keep it on the crank, can I keep it in time? So I want to make sure it's at the most recognizable spot before I go ahead and take that out. So on these cam clamps, they're labeled E one through five and I one through five. So you know which side is exhaust, which side is intake, and to not swap them around, just make a mental note, snap a picture, do whatever you gotta do so that you know what's going on. All right, I'm really struggling to get the manifold bolts loose. I kind of shut the camera off while I was working underneath. Uh, removing the exhaust. So come up top here and I'm removing some bolts for the timing chain cover that goes to the head. Hopefully I won't have to remove the whole thing because it's a big long mess it looks like to take apart the whole side of the motor. If I can just get this stuff out of the way and keep rolling, that's what I want to do. So with that, Let's keep rolling. So I got the cams out. I was holding really tight on the chain so I don't think it slipped off the crank. One thing I did notice is the Tensioner for the chain did push all the way out So I'll, hopefully when the head comes off it has access to it I'm not 100% sure exactly how that one works. I know every one of them is different uh, It did have ratcheting sound to it though uh, I Zip tied it up grabbed some vice grips and now I'm holding it up with vice grips Together up so it stays tight on the crank. I'm gonna have to go buy a 12 point socket that fits on these i've heard it's a 10 millimeter so i'll get a 10 and a 12 just in case and i also need uh, a 19 millimeter wrench to be able to pull off the tensioner for the serpentine belt so hold tight so i've seen on the vvti engines it's possible to pull the head off without removing the timing cover and I don't see any other way to be able to pull this head off without pulling the timing cover. I was hoping I could get away with it, but it's looking like there's no possible way due to this bolt on the guides. Let's see if I can get a good angle so that you can see it. All right, so right behind the guide right there, there is a 10 millimeter bolt. Well, that bolt goes into the head and on the outside there is just cast there is no right where that oil spot is approximately where that bolt is and i can't get a wrench down in there because the guide's blocking me so it really sucks but looks like we are pulling the timing cover off because there's no other way to go about getting that stinking little bolt down there
Alrighty, I'm to the point that now I just need to remove my motor mount. There is a couple of bolts that are impossible to get to with the motor mount still attached. You have to lift it up to get the tensioner bolt out and then you have to lower it down to get the power steering pump bolt out. And I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about when I grab the camera here. Alright, so that bolt on the tensioner back there is, uh, see if I can point to it, this one right here has to come out but the frame rail is right there so you're gonna have to lift the motor to get it up just above there so that that can come off and out of the way so you can get the timing chair cover off and then the other problem piece is this bolt down here it comes out so far and then hits the frame rail so you're gonna have to lower the motor to be able to get that bolt out this is just the ultimate pain in the neck if I was to do this all over again, I would definitely pull the motor. It's your axles come out, you undo your wire harness, and you could drop the whole freaking thing out the bottom or pull it out the top, however you prefer. And I feel like it'd be way faster, less broken knuckles, just an all around better job. I mean, you can do it if you want to keep it in the car, but it's up to you so with that let's get these motor mount bolts pulled out and try to get this thing free so i can get the timing chain cover off so this is the problem bolt i would say i mean it comes out and i'll be getting about that far out and it hits the firewall but you do have enough room to jack the side of the motor up i used to Couple two by fours along the bottom edge of the pan where the bolts are, so I'm not stressing the pan out more on the bolts. And it's enough that you kind of get it between the AC lines and you can slide it out. And this whole assembly can slide out of the car. So now we just got our power steering pump bolt to get out. So I'll have to take the rest of the motor mount loose so that it will slide out the bottom. So let's get doing that. All right, so I just got my harmonic balancer pulled off. Always inspect your parts because uh, we'll see how well you can see this. So there's a crack in the harmonic balancer. I can't really get a good read on it. Oh, there we go. You can see it starts from the edge of the keeper here and rolls up all the way through. So we're gonna replace this, but it's always good to inspect your parts so you know kind of what to watch out for things that are failing whatever the case might be clearly this has lived a hard, hard life and it's time for a new one so we'll get the timing chain cover off and hopefully pull this head off all right so this is the one bolt that goes into the chain guide that will keep you from pulling the head off unfortunate design but it is what it is. It's possible to do it in the car. So let's get the head studs broke loose and should be able to pull it up. There is also one more bolt that I ran into that's an issue. It is this long stud back here. It's going to take, you probably should double nut it, ram the nuts against themselves so that you can put a wrench on it and remove that stud because with it in, the timing cover hits all this crap and you can't get it out that's the only thing keeping it from coming straight up so we'll remove it or see if we can lift the head off with it still attached we'll just see what happens camera dive so you didn't get to see it but if you can't get your exhaust manifold bolts off because they're frozen or you're afraid of smashing your hands you can still get this out of the car no problem with it attached you just have to at the collector down there take it loose and it'll pop right out uh, you can see maybe <clears throat> the 
The uh, problem cylinder seems to be a little darker. The, the gasket seemed to be in good shape. Everything that I looked at seemed to be in good shape, but I don't know. We'll send it out to the machine shop, see what they say, see what the issue is, and we'll go from there. With that, I'm going to pull the other purple silica in. We're going to tear it down. But I really think it'll probably be faster to go ahead and yank the whole motor out of the car because this involved a lot of scraped knuckles, tight spaces, having to do things that are quite uncomfortable. And I feel like if you just yank it out, you can probably save yourself a bunch of time and frustration. So with that, stick around for the next video. It'll be a clear understanding of exactly what has to happen. And I'll film it instead of trying to time lapse it so you can see more of what's going on. So stick around and until next week. I got it!